Hello everybody, my name is Ilya. My name is Tyler. Together we make up Cobra, a couple that loves to play board games. And bring board games wherever we go. Yeah. So today we want to share some of the games we love bringing with us on various occasions. Maybe it's traveling. Mainly it's traveling. These are all portable games that we find that would be like easy to tuck away in our backpack and that we think everybody would enjoy. So they're easy for us to just teach and bring to the table. Maybe they're easy to conceal in a jacket that I can just get it out and then be like, we're going to play this. Well, we're going to give you 10 and we'll each bring you five. Hooray. Let's get started. So my first pick is Abandon All Artichokes. Wow. This one's designed by Emma Larkins and published by Game Right. And the essential plot of this game is that you're starting off with a lot of artichokes and you're just trying to get rid of them. Yeah, ten to be exact. Your yep. whole deck is made of them. So the person that wins is the first, it's a deck building game. And the first person to draw five cards and have no artichokes wins. Yeah. But you'll be taking cards from the, little plants from the garden. And it's very wholesome and it brings a lot of joy to me. And there's a lot of various strategies you can take as well. Because you can either get rid of the artichokes or really just bring more vegetables into yeah, your deck. Flood your deck, yeah. Exactly. Abandon all artichokes. Artichokes. Cool. What's your number, the first one? Ah, they're not in any particular order. No These particular are just games order. That I felt like I wanted to bring. Okay. Okay, mine first one is Ohanami. It's designed by Steven Bendorf and it's published by Panasaurus. And essentially, you're just like making your own garden and scoring more points depending on the cards that you have and the colors that they are uh, over three rounds. <laughs> and it's very cool. Uh, you can. There's a lot of different strategies. It's like a card drafting game where you're handing cards like off after you take yeah. one or two, I believe. Uh, and yeah, there's just like a, a bunch of different ways you can score a bunch of different points and it's a lot yeah. of fun. The rounds vary. It's... And it's a little crunchy, so I really like it. The Brune. Yay. That's all Hanami. The next one for me is Variety. Oh. All the Button Shy game. That's cheating. <gasps> oh, we have Strawopolis? Sprawlopolis. Sprawlopolis. I always think it's straw. It's not. Sprawlopolis. Anyway, uh, there's a bunch. Bunchai does such a good job at having the most portable games there is to be. There's uh, no competition. Uh, uh -huh. But the one I want to talk about today is Tussie Messi. Yeah. So designed by Elizabeth Hargrave and published by Button Shy Games. This is a uh, I pick you choose type of game. Uh -huh. So there's you'll have beautiful flowers. You'll pick one and you'll place it face up and one face down. And your opponent will choose which one they want to take. Mm -hmm. And you get the other one. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the game is quite short, but the combination of flowers may score you various points. So, and it's a mind game because yeah. maybe you want to be like, well, I'm going to show you this card because it's so good, but maybe what's underneath is better. But you'll never know. Well, you'll unless you take know. it. You'll never know. Or it could be worse. And I love this back. game. It's great. It's great. Yep. On another flower related note, <laughs> Flutagoose. I thought we could bring Floriferous. This makes me think of I'm going to the beach. I'm going to And I'm bringing beach. one abandoned all artichokes. Am I also allowed to come? <laughs> uh, this one is a, I'll call it a set collection game mm -hmm. because you're going through trying to collect different types of flowers and score uh, and scoring goals based on wherever you want to pick in the row, row. But you'll essentially go from left to right, right to left, left to right, and the game is over. Um, and you'll take turns drafting cards in the columns. Mm -hmm. Now, four of them, depending on how many people you're playing with, are all um, uh, like large cards, which will be like flowers, bouquets, statues. Um, and they'll score you points through various means. Mm -hmm. But the fun part is, is the bottom row is scoring, scoring conditions. Cards. Yeah. Yes. And you'll have to play through those to try and like, uh, you you basically have to balance whether or not you want to go last because the lower you pick, the um, later on you go on your turn. But you have to make sure you get those goals because those are, the, those are where most of your points will come from. Uh, and you have to do like a balancing act, which I think is a lot of fun. So it's a little crunchy. It's really, it's a really fast game though. And it's beautiful. And, yeah. Cool. Floral well, Riffers. Now the one I have next is Mass Transit. Oh boy. So this one's published by Calliope Games and is designed by Chris Leader and Kevin Rogers. Hey. So this is a really tough cooperative game. 
Yeah. It is not easy to win. I feel like we may have won once. maybe once, we and that was once. like a maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what you're trying to do is there's a lot of individuals in the hub of the city, and you're trying to get them home by building out various transit cycles. So will they take the boat? Will they take the train? Will they drive the car? Will they walk? We don't know. Mm -hmm. But if you're successful in getting them to all the six homes around the hub, you win. You win. <laughs> but it is very challenging. So essentially you'll play cards either to move the individuals or add to the paths that they have to move through. Mm -hmm. And it's very crunchy. It definitely makes you think and it tests the teamwork that you have. Yeah. This is a cooperative game that'll definitely keep you playing again and again because you just want to win. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's up to six players. It's really hard. Very tough. Well, my third one is classic. We have to we have to at least have one roll and write. I feel at like we should one. have more. Maybe But maybe. this one is Railroad Inc. Hooray! This one is like super portable, super super portable. It's got the dry erase markers, but essentially you're trying to make railroads and score the most points with them because well, railroads and roads. Um, and basically you'll roll dice, uh, you can add the expansions to it, there are quite a lot, but in this one it's just, I think it's um, rivers, right? Oh, rivers and lakes. Yeah, I love the various dice that add to the expansions because there's many other versions. Some of them allow like volcanoes and trees and it just mm. it really spices the game up quite a bit. Yeah, it's brain burner because you've got to place at least two of the dice down mm -hmm. uh, and it can be pretty brain crunchy. Uh, you've got like different uh, goals that you are aiming towards. You essentially mm -hmm. just want to make all of the uh, the most rails connect to the most exits and the most roads connect to the most exit. And Difficult. that way, yeah, you'll score a bunch of points, but it's not it doesn't always go in your favor and it's really fun to like map it out and try and figure out what you need. Tyler's very good at this game. Now, on the easier side of the cooperative games, I want to bring the crew. I'm yeah, going I... to the beach and I'm bringing the crew. Easy. Easy. Easier. It's not as mass transit difficulty. But essentially, it's a trick-taking game. I absolutely adore trick-taking games. Three to five players, Thomas Ting, Thames and Cosmos. And basically, what you're trying to do is you're going under the water to explore the deep sea. What will you find? Nobody knows. knows. I like the story in this. It's very cool. The story is very it progressively cool. grows and you learn like things. So. And missions are always different. So essentially you're playing tricks cooperatively to fulfill missions. So this person needs to get the lowest of this suit. So everyone's kind of helping them out by playing cards and flushing out some of the colors potentially. Mm -hmm. So it's very clever. It gets you, there's silence, no communication, but there's a nice little communication mechanism within the game. And I always have a blast playing the crew. It's one of my favorite games for sure. Yeah, trick taking games are amazing, so yes. Win for me. Woohoo! Next wah, wah. up, we have 10! Ten. 10 games? No, just 10. Oh! Yeah. Ten. So 10 is published by AEG and it is designed by Molly Johnson, Sean Stankovich, and Robert Melvin. The amazing flat out Yay. crew! So basically, in this game, you'll be flipping over cards. It's almost like a push your luck game where you want to collect um, consecutive numbers from one to nine uh, of the same color. There are wild cards that you'll be bidding on and there's various ways to get money um, by basically pushing your luck. You'll flip these cards over and either choose money or choose cards, uh, which can later exactly be used to bid on wild cards, which will help you finish those lines. Uh, I really like this game because it feels like a push your luck, but it also is like, you know that it's one of those games where there's a lot more ones than there are nines. Um, so you have to like be very cautious about when you spend your money, what you spend your money on, and how you go about uh, collecting all the consecutive lines. And it's called 10 because if you collect all nine cards from one to nine, you'll score 10 points. I love it because the group really determines how this game is played. Because if everyone's risky, then you can be risky. But if everyone's more conservative and really collecting all the cards, then you kind of have to or else you're going to fall behind. So really, like, the group sets the dynamic, which I love. Yeah, and you know, uh, there's four colors in this, and you, uh, I would recommend not going for um, all four. That's Maybe two, business. maybe yeah. three. Yeah, four is tough. Mm -hmm. Definitely tough. Yeah, definitely try to complete one mm -hmm. and then, like, make some kind of consecutive line with another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's ten. Now I have one of my favorite party games, which Ooh. is Doodle Dash. Ooh. So this is from Chili Fox Games. And the reason I love this game so much 
is because it's quick, it's to the point, and there's so many laughs involved every single time. You do not have to be an artist for this one. No. And I th so basically the way the game is played is one player will hold a card up, it has seven options, they'll pick a number from one to seven, and then everybody else will draw what that option is. So say it's a lake. Now the first person to finish their drawing will grab the little golden rod, second person will grab the dice, and then those people will be the first that are guests. So it's a, it's a balance of accuracy and precision and speed. Clarity is so, important in this game. And I, every time we play this game, there's been belly laugh moments because someone just really wants to get that point and have the first opportunity to score. But then you but see their they, picture. <laughs> it's terrible. And they see their picture too. That's the best part about it. It's like, oh yeah, somebody's going to be able to guess cat with this. And then they flip it up and it's like, four lines. <laughs> I've never had a bad time playing this game yeah. and I generally never think I will because it's always such a pleasure. Yeah. So Doodle Dash is one of mine that I'll bring anywhere I go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, my last one is kind of like a stretch for the portability type thing, but it's just like we recently got it and I really like playing it. Um, it's, so we're going to bring it anyway. <laughs> it's, it's another flipping right? And I'll explain to you why I think it's a great one to bring. It's called Welcome to the Moon. Moon, moon, yeah. moon, moon. Amazing game that's just like an extension of Welcome to, if you've mm -hmm. ever played that game. But the cool thing about this is it's got like a campaign going on, which means it has a bunch of different maps. Eight, and, yeah, to be precise. Eight maps. And uh, that means that there are just so many different ways to play this game. <laughs> you don't necessarily have to worry about like actually following the campaign if you're feeling like more of a grindy one you might want to play like the sixth scenario or something along that, that line but like it's exactly like welcome to they put in different like mechanics that will help you mm -hmm. do different things on the map score different points different ways and then obviously um your goals are going to be different every time you do a different map mm -hmm. and it's just been a blast no, it's well. very simple you flip cards and then you choose one of the three options mm -hmm. which makes it really accessible and quite friendly and approachable to play but like Tyler said, I love that you can really just pick one of the eight missions and do those or play them all in order if you have like a longer setting that you want to play in. And every time you're going to enjoy it because it's an absolute blast, but very brain burning as well. Yeah, it can definitely hurt the brain because there are some rows that are actually like almost full 15 and mm -hmm. there's only 15, like you're drawing from one to 15 and sometimes that can hurt. Exactly. <laughs> well, that's my last game, and yeah, it, it might not be as portable, but it is fulfilling and has lots, lots in there. Yeah, under armpit can go like, welcome to the moon. Well, thank you so much for checking out our video. Our question of the day today is, what's your go-to game to bring on a trip that is nice, compact, and portable? To the beach. Exactly. Or Maybe a not forest. Anywhere. Mm, particularly, to the moon? yeah, particularly <gasps> when maybe you're flying or you've got limited space. What game would lines. you play in anti gravity? In anti gravity, you're going to space. What game would be perfect for that? Um, Ubungo 3D. <laughs> I think that would be hilarious. It has to be an exterior. Yeah, it has to be. There's, there's no question about that. <laughs> it's okay. Rhino Hero, but all the cards just right. keep floating. Away. All right, that one might not work. <laughs> At least with Ubunga, you'd have to like, you'd be able to like yeah, hold on the pieces bring and bring them in. <laughs> they just but, keep flying yeah, away. That would be pretty cool. Well, thank you so much for watching. Hit that thumbs up button. What else do you do? And hit that subscribe button. And if you really want to see more videos from us, hit that bell notification because we make videos twice a week and we're looking forward to making more. But until next time, this is us sailing off into the seas, the moon, the skies, wherever it may be so that we can bring these games and visit with wonderful people. Bye.